We are joined now by Dr. Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General of these United States. General Adams, good morning to you, sir. Thanks for your time. Good morning. As we just mentioned there in, in, in Kerry's story, the president of the United States hosting two large gatherings, uh, one at Mount Rushmore, the other in Washington, D.C., where a few hundred thousand folks are expected. Uh, masks not going to be required at either event. We know, based on CDC guidance, that large gatherings uh, presents the biggest problem right now. If a loved one came to you, Dr. Adams, and said, should I go to one of those events, what would you advise? Well, thank you so much for that question, Craig. And as we go into this 4th of July weekend, it's important that everyone remembers my Surgeon General's prescription for staying safe from coronavirus. Uh, three quick points. Number one, know your risk. We know that people who are older and people who have chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure are at higher risk for coronavirus. If you're at higher risk, you should consider staying at home. Number two, understand your circumstances. Are you in a community where spread is going up or going down? Are you going to a place where you can social distance or not? Uh, are you going to a place that's outside or inside? Because we know outside is lower risk than inside for spread of coronavirus. But Dr. Adams, with all, with, three, all, with all due respect, no, not to interrupt you, but, but we know that large gatherings presents the, the biggest risk right now. Would you advise someone to go to a large gathering? Yes or no? Well, Craig, it's not a yes or no. Every single person has to make up their own mind. There are going to be people going to beaches, going to barbecues, going to different environments, and they have to look at their individual risk. As you mentioned, CDC says uh, larger gatherings are a higher risk. You have to take that into account again with whether or not you're at risk, whether you live with someone who is vulnerable, and then you have to take measures to stay safe. And the most important thing I would say to people is if you do go out to a gathering or in public, Please wear a face covering. As we talk about 4th of July and independence, it's important to understand that if we all wear these, we will actually have more independence and more freedom because more places we will be able to stay Doc open will have less spread of the disease. Dr. Adams, one of, the, one of the chief criticisms of the administration so far has been this mixed messaging as it relates to large gatherings and as it relates to that mask that you just held up. Because this morning and earlier this week, you were pl practically pleading with people to wear these masks in public. But this is what you said uh, back in early March. A reminder. One of the things they shouldn't be doing, the general public, is going out and buying masks. It actually uh, does not help. It's not been proven to be effective in preventing spread of coronavirus amongst the general public. All right. That's three months ago. What prompted the change of heart? Well, as I said many times, Craig, and, and I'm glad you asked me the question, but it, it really does hurt when we share outdated information. It's important for people to understand that we now know 40 to 50 percent of cases of coronavirus are spread asymptomatically, and that's different than any other coronavirus we've experienced before, which means you could have, uh, have no symptoms, no cough, no fever, and still be someone who's spreading the disease. We know that many of the new cases are being spread in much younger people and it's why we now encourage everyone to wear a face covering or a mask so that you can prevent asymptomatic spread. If you want college football in the fall, young people, please wear a face covering. If you want prom next year, please wear a face covering. It can prevent asymptomatic spread and help us overcome this, this virus. Or if you just want grandma or grandpa to, to, to stay alive as well. But, but here's the thing. That requiring and, and encouraging are entirely different. Entirely different. Why not require folks who are going to be on the National Mall to wear those, those face masks? Why not require people who are going to be at Mount Rushmore to wear those masks if we know that wearing them literally saves lives? Well, that's a great question, and uh, we will support governors and local officials with their decision-making. They know their people best. Here's the challenge. If you make something mandatory, uh, particularly for the younger age groups we're talking about, Many of them will rebel and do the exact opposite. I think it's more important from a health perspective that we help people understand why these are important and that we help them understand how they benefit from wearing them, which is why I talk about prom and homecoming and college football and college basketball. If people understand why they're doing it, they're going to be more likely to comply. If it's mandatory, they'll only do it when someone's watching. And so while I'm not against anyone who has a mandate. I think the most important thing from a health communications point of view is helping people understand how they benefit and why they should do this. All right. Uh, Dr. Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General. Uh, Dr. Adams, thank you. COVID stops with us. Wear a face covering this weekend.